No, what, what, conservatives do not believe that medical assistance in dying is a solution for mental illness. Conservatives believe that we should provide mental health care to people to uh, imp improve their quality of life, help heal the psychological wounds that are afflicting them, rather than giving up. Um, and we're very worried about the slippery slope that we see. We see now cases where, you know, uh, certain groups are advocating that small infants be given medical assistance in dying. Obviously, they could not consent to that. We see our veterans department telling our heroes that instead of getting the services that they deserve, they should consider ending their own lives. Retired Corporal Christine Gauthier testified the department that is supposed to help her instead offered her a medically assisted death. And the person at back mentioned at that point, well, you know that we can assist you with uh, assisted dying now if you'd like. And I was just shocked because it was like, are you serious? Like, that easy, you're going to be helping me to die, but you won't help me to live? The Prime Minister said he will ensure that Veterans Affairs does not offer medically assisted death to veterans again. This is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and as soon as we heard uh, about this, uh, we took action. A former member of the Canadian military and a five-time world champion Paralympian, Gautier suffered permanent damage to her knees and spine during a training exercise in 1989. For the last five years, she has been fighting for a wheelchair ramp for her home and says the current system is broken. <laughs> it took 18 years to receive a second set of wheels for my wheelchair. Does anybody have just one pair of shoes? All right, guys. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, Mark Holland, the uh, Minister of Health, or as you saw from the thumbnail, the Minister of Death, in my opinion, and all his uh, liberal lackeys who are trying to push this made thing um, for all Canadians and are now trying to push it towards minors as well as mentally ill patients. Now, as of January 30th, there's been a pause on the, the push to include mental illness, which was supposed to be effective this March. Uh, now, the pause, I think, has been pushed to uh, March of 2027. However, there's liberal senators that are trying to get this pushed through. I don't think they want to wait that long to include mental illness or minors. And um, I just don't understand what the whole deal of this push is. Now, I think that MAID does play a beneficial role for certain individuals, uh, in particular people with degenerative diseases like ALS or Alzheimer's or people who are terminally ill and there won't be like some sort of recovery or, you know, light at the end of the tunnel in a sense. Um, and I've seen a few defenses in regards to the minor situation where they state, well, if a 70-year-old has terminal cancer and a 12-year-old also has the same diagnosis, why should the 70-year-old get it but not the 12-year-old? And they also say that a 12-year-old has a legal right to accept or refuse medical treatment that may prolong their life currently. Now, again, I do understand this point of, you know, if this child has a terminal illness that they will not recover from. Um, and maybe they are in a lot of suffering and just want to, you know, not be. Yeah, I understand. Do I agree with it? No, but, you know, that's just my opinion. However, their main reasoning, I think, is when they look at Made for Minors Elsewhere, where they cite that in the Netherlands and Belgium, uh, they allow it, and Made is allowed for minors 12 and over. However, Minors that are in the age bracket of 12 to 16 must have parental consent in the Netherlands, and between 16 and 18, their parents must be consulted, but do not have the power to veto this child's decision. However, in Belgium, there is no minimum age, but the Belgian minor must be terminally ill, dying in the short term, and experiencing unbearable suffering. Now, if this terminally illness part is not the only caveat to allowing minors to do so, and you do open this up to mental illness, well, there's been a large spike in many reports that half of mental illness disorders in adulthood start at age 14, but most cases are undetected and untreated. And there's also been studies with the Washington Post where they say young adults in the United States experience anxiety and depression twice as frequent as teenagers 
Um, however, the numbers aren't far off. 36% of young adults ages 18 to 25 report anxiety compared to 18% of younger teenagers ages 14 to 17. And 15% of those kids also feel depression. So there seems to be a really strong push into mental illness. And for the party that talks so much about, you know, say the LGBTQ community um, being uh, the most vulnerable and having uh, high suicide rates and this and this and that. Well, why would you want to push this and open this up to minors who, if minors are the ones with a lot of mental illness or, you know, start very early and, you know, say they can't deal with their, their, depression or anxiety of whatever it is then they just want to end their life they would potentially be eligible through made now again as i said this has been put on a pause but statistics canada also came out with some information in regards to recording deaths through made and they state in the database the underlying cause of death is defined as the disease or injury that initiated the train of morbid events leading directly to death. As such, made deaths are coded to the underlying condition for which made was requested. This means if this mental health issue gets passed, that people can be recorded as dying from depression or dying from anxiety or dying from schizophrenia, dying from bipolarism, whatever kind of mental health issue they have, will just be recorded as them dying from that and not dying from made which is bananas now again i did as i did state this has been put on pause but they are still trying to push through for with it even when committees have talked about how they are not prepared for it and the numbers do not support this even yesterday, uh, Minister Holland, I felt, was gaslighting when he talked about, oh, people who have suffered for decades and tried everything. Even if that were the test, I've not seen that spelled out anywhere in writing, that you have to have been going through something for decades and you have to have exhausted all avenues. So that's not even a guardrail they've proposed, is it? Not a guardrail. They Advocates have claimed that that's what would happen, but then they oppose legislating it. Mm. Uh, in fact, the government provided no safeguards, no new safeguards. And quite frankly, there aren't any safeguards that would make this expansion safe because there are two fundamental clinical and legal issues. Uh, the first is uh, a clinical and legal one, and that is that it is difficult, if not impossible, to predict irremediability. In other words, it's difficult, if not impossible, to predict whether someone could get better resulting in persons prematurely having their lives end, which is completely unacceptable. We heard evidence from psychiatrists that uh, a mistake or error rate could be as high as 50% of the time on the question of irremediability. And it's a legal 50, 50%. issue. 50%. 50%. So we're talking about a coin toss here, basically. A coin toss. Uh, another psychiatrist said uh, they could be uh, right not 5% of the time or 95% uh, of the time, there's just so much uncertainty surrounding it, which just underscores the recklessness of this, because if the liberals had studied this, had they consulted before deciding to do this, they would have heard that feedback from uh, leading psychiatrists. And I would hope that no responsible government would, on that basis, move ahead with this. But this doesn't appear to be a responsible government. And the, you know, the second issue that is uh, a clinical one, fundamental, is that it is difficult to accurately assess when, when persons are suffering from mental illness. Whether their request for made is one that is rational, uh, in other words, that they're competent to make that request, or whether it is one motivated by suicidal ideation. That's underscored by the fact that in about 90% of cases of, of suicide deaths, uh, th those persons have a diagnosable mental illness. The overwhelming evidence before the committee from experts, in fact, just about every leading expert said, don't go ahead with this. Uh, there were nearly 900 briefs uh, submitted in the span of about a week, which is very high for a committee. In fact, it might be the most briefs I've had on a committee or a study that I've been involved in, uh, which shows uh, 
public interest and concern. And most of those briefs submitted by Canadians, including a number of experts, was don't go ahead with this. And uh, although they like to talk about this in an abstract sense, let's talk about what this would really mean. Who would qualify? What does it mean to expand uh, made in cases of mental illness? When Mona Gupta, uh, who was the chair of the liberal appointed expert panel on this matter, was asked what would constitute a mental illness or a mental disorder, she said anything listed in the uh, DSM-5. What that would mean is that it could uh, include persons who are suffering from depression, who have schizophrenia, who are autistic, who have uh, issues arising from uh, uh, drug addictions. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about made and mental illness. As you could hear from that member of parliament, as well as the veteran in the beginning, it sounds like the liberals and this whole MAID program uh, are really focused on helping you kill yourself rather than getting the, the help that you need um, in order to, you know, continue living a life. And Joe Rogan actually just went on a little bit of a rant about how deranged liberals have become. And the way I describe it the other day, it's like if two ships are going in a certain direction. This is a ship where people logically work through things. And this is a ship that's adjusted by the algorithm, affected by the algorithm. Mm. It just moves that much. Over time... This is what we're seeing. So over time, you and I, who used to be on the left, are now like, where's the left? Where are you guys? You yeah. guys are so far away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can't even see you. Yeah, yeah. You're out of your mind. You're, you're, you're chopping dicks off and, and giving little kids <laughs> yeah, yeah. hormone blockers. You have no idea what the long-term consequences are. You're ignoring the health risks. You won't even talk about the health risks. Yeah. You, you use things like... G gender affirming care. What are you saying? Yeah. What are you saying when you're talking about children? Yeah. Why are you just accepting this? Because it, it's, it's a noble thing to blurt out. So everybody goes, you're on the right team. That's what it is. Yeah. It's not like, oh my God, what are we doing to kids? It's not like, oh my God, what are we doing to San Francisco? It's not like, oh my God, why are we letting these violent criminals out of jail? It's like, yeah. oh my God, why are we defunding the f police? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You can't say any of those things. Now, again, this is a logical argument. You don't need to be a conservative or right winger or anything like that to to have this kind of viewpoint. Yet that's for sure what Joe's going to be painted as now as a Republican or, you know, far right guy. And, you know, that's what Pierre and other conservatives like even Danielle Smith are trying to say. You know, we need to have better protections for the kids, especially with this LGBTQ stuff. We need to stop the crime, uh, you know, there's no bail reform or whatever it is, a catch and release thing, defunding police, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the list goes on. You know, now I'd like to move on to when the announcement happened and just listen to these reporters grill uh, Mark Holland and listen to his responses. Um, doesn't, doesn't that then become a political football the thing you said yesterday shouldn't be it's, it would then be an election issue why would you delay made until after the election well first of all we're going to be introducing legislation at this time i can't talk about the timing uh, for well, reasons certainly of parliament you can talk approved. about the government's intention i'm not asking you the details of the bill <laughs> sorry i just came up the stairs um take a breath yeah exactly <laughs> this is the minister of health who's getting winded from coming up a set of stairs that he probably comes up every day <laughs> while he's working. This is our Minister of Health. And even the reporters are like, yeah, yeah, buddy. Stop making excuses. Take a breath. Answer my questions. <laughs> uh, so look, the, the important thing here is getting it right and the time that it takes to do so. Uh, when when uh, the, you look at the committee, and I really thank the Parliamentary Committee for their work, uh, they heard from an extensive list of witnesses. We followed that process closely. Uh, for myself, in talking with the provinces and the territories, um, the time that's required, uh, we got to get that right. Yes, I heard uh, you say all of that yesterday, sir. So what I'm asking is, how much time do you need? And if you're putting it off to after the next election, A, it's a political football, but B, aren't you opening well, look, the government I to understand, challenge? I understand, challenge. Look, I understand why you want today for me to say how long we're doing it. I've, I'd just I'd like explain. you to be transparent with Canadians well, about no, your but, intentions. Of course, but what I'm saying is that due to parliamentary privilege until the legislation mm, is tabled. Privilege. I can't talk about. You don't about have to talk about the legislation. No, no, no. no but I can't talk intention. about how long. What's your 
policy intention? So, okay. What's your policy so, intention? The policy intention, as I've said, is to make sure that we take the time necessary to get this right. And I wish in, in, in a few days' time, once the legislation is tabled, we can have a very specific and detailed conversation around what time is necessary based on those conversations. But I cannot, you know, you, you, if you re really listen to the question that you're asking me, you're saying, why don't you put it in front of the election so it's not a political football? That is the essence of making it political. And that's exactly what I don't want to do. We can't base a system readiness on whether the timing of an election. We have to base the system readiness on how many people have been trained, about how, how ready the provinces are telling us they are, whether or not the curriculum that has been adopted has been well metabolized by the system. Those are the questions as a health minister I have to ask. Because of the Yet, as he just stated, and we heard from the committee member as well, saying, Nobody said that they were ready for this. Nobody said that this was a good idea. All of the professionals are saying you shouldn't expand it to this. Yet he's still talking about a potential expansion even after this delay has happened. Like, I just don't get it. The end of the day. It's been three years. Yes. I mean, how much more time? I yeah. mean, it's been to three what extent years. can we assume that those who are asking more time are just people who don't agree with it? Well, look, I've talked with uh, health ministers from New Democratic governments, health ministers from uh, a liberal government, a uh, health minister uh, from, uh, from Quebec, uh, you know, all of whom say their system isn't ready. So it's not just conservative. Uh, <laughs> like, you can't make that up. All the different parties say that they're not ready for this. So why, it, why even bother trying to expand it to that? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Health ministers that are saying this. Uh, this is, uh, these are every single health minister from every single province, every single territory telling me they're not ready. So, I mean, yes, it's three years. So, there, so in my conversations, there has, there, nobody has told me they're ready. So let me just be clear. You've talked to 10 of them? I have, talked, I have talked, to, I, I've talked to all 13. Uh, and I can tell you that all 13 have expressed to me that their system isn't ready. And they have but I have asked said, you for an indefinite pause. So is that what That is not true. Doing? That is not true. There, yes, are, there, no, are, no, some, no, there are some, there are some, there are some who are, there are some. So all 13 tell him that they're not ready, but none of them have asked for an indefinite pause. Or not all of them have asked for an indefinite pause. Some that are, yesterday asking for an indefinite pause. There are some. There are some that are asking for an indefinite pause. And, and what I've said, and again, due to parliamentary privilege, in a, in a couple of days' time, when we introduce the legislation, we can talk exact timing. What I'm saying right now, okay, is I can't talk about that exact timing until the legislation is tabled for reasons of but parliamentary you privilege. Whether you're considering an, uh, like, uh, an indefinite pause, that's very different than two years, three years, more years. An indefinite pause. I'm saying that no I'm not. I'm saying that until the legislation is tabled, I can't talk about timing. What I can talk about. Well, you can talk about. I can talk about. What then? What then, in your view, is enough people trained? The report yesterday that you said you agreed with said only two percent of Canadian psychiatrists have been trained. What level of, of training do you want to see nationally? If you were to give yeah. leadership, what's the level? I, I mean, I think. The, look, at the end of the day, this is a del this is delivered by the provinces, and so I rely on the provinces and territories to be able to tell us in their systems what their what what their requirements are for state of readiness. Now, some of them are uh, ideological on this issue, absolutely. Some of them are, uh, you know, uh, their position is that they don't ever want this to occur. Um, and, and I understand that, but that is not, uh, in my view, um, a tenable position. Uh, I think that, the, uh, that there's very clear that mental suffering and physical suffering have equivalency. Mm. The question here is a state of readiness. And so what I, what I think we're going to be looking for on that basis is the preponderance of reasonable opinion. Um, that the system is ready, uh, and at this point in time, that isn't the case. Uh, and you know, when you when I don't have any uh, any province or territory coming forward and saying their system is ready, that certainly is an indication that it's not there. <laughs> no province, no territory has come out and said that they're ready. Only two percent of the professionals are trained in, in this. Like again, why is this even being tabled? Just scrap the mental health prop uh, issue completely. Get it out of there. It doesn't make any sense. 
and that we need to be able to take the time to uh, to be able to make sure that this gets right. Seven provinces and all territories have asked specifically for an indefinite pause. So just can you be clear to Canadians, is that an option you're considering? An so, indefinite pause, no date on when the implementation comes. So I don't, I, I don't, I've tried to answer this question. Okay, no, and you I'm haven't. trying to say he's giving the the regular liberal ring around the rosy that they always do uh, when they're being questioned. That the challenge that I have when we introduce legislation, there's parliamentary privilege. I am not going to, okay, and I, I, hopefully I'm clear on this, violate parliamentary privilege. In a couple of days' time, when the legislation has been tabled, then I will come out and I will very specifically answer those questions when parliamentary privilege allows me. At this moment in time, I can only speak to general context. <laughs> so he can only speak to general context at this point. Anyways, there's a little bit more to that clip, but the guy's a clown. Uh, but as always, love to hear from you guys. A little bit longer of a video, but there was a lot to cover. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much.